Would you like to be somebody who understands what the four stages of the anima development are? Then listen to this entire video where I first explain what the anima archetype is and the four different stages and uh, steps in development of the anima, what they are, what they consist of. So before we get into this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to learn more about self-development, dating, and how to reduce suffering in life. Let's get into it. So in this video, I am explaining what the anima is. The anima is an archetype which lies in the collective unconscious of every single human being. It is present across all cultures, and it is referring to an archetype that is present within men and it is typically referred to as a uh, the feminine aspects, feminine characteristics of a man. Now, in this video, I will be referring to content and re rephrasing content from the YouTube channel called The Diamond Net, which I, has an excellent video on describing the anima and the animus, which I will leave in the description for you to look at. So in men, there is the anima archetype, and which is the feminine, and in women, there is the animus archetype, which is the masculine. So um, as I said, the anima is typically referred to as the feminine side of a man's personality. However, the anima is actually far more than that. The anima really relates to, uh, is, is the sort of sense-making, it is the way a man relates to his environment externally as well as internally. So for example, his unconscious, his emotions and feelings. And the anima is the mediator between the conscious and the unconsciousness of a man. So it can be relatively underdeveloped and it can be well integrated on the other side. So there's sort of two extremes, let's say, or uh, like a, a breadth of uh, stages of development, which I will get to in a second. Now, if the anima is underdeveloped, um, this is quite undesirable because it means the man is possessed by his anima and that means he is disconnected to his um, emotions, how he feels, to his feminine side. Um, for example, he might be very um, emotional and um, he, he, he will feel like he is not in control of his own self, of, of himself, let's say and which I'll get to in a second. And then on the other hand, other hand, it can be very well integrated where the man owns and accepts and, and um, incorporates the feminine aspects into his personality and actively acts it out and is conscious and aware of it. So, uh, and also if, um, if the anima is underdeveloped, basically the man represses his anima into his shadow. So all the feminine aspects, let's say if a very masculine man does not want to behave feminine by all means, because he, he sees it as a weak, let's say, he will repress his compassion, his empathy, his uh, ability to care for others into his shadow because he sees it as um, unworthy or uh, let's say wrong. So he pushes it into a part of himself that um, he does not want to manifest and he's, he's let's say afraid of in some sense which is quite dangerous then because the, the greater your shadow, the more potential it has, let's say, to wreak havoc on your, or to manifest itself in your behavior and uh, make you behave in very unwanted ways. Now, uh, an, 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 an important discussion in the realm of, or in the, with the idea of the anima is that, and the animus is that men and women are not uh, completely unidimensional in whether they are masculine for men or feminine for women, like completely masculine or completely feminine. Men and women, I would say, are always a mix of both. So they are neither only masculine men and they have nothing feminine about them. That's not the case. It is usually a mix of both. And you, it's like a scale, like between, uh, let's say, feminine on this side, masculine on this side, and people always lie somewhere in between. They never lie completely at one end. So you can never be at the extreme pole of masculinity or the extreme ultimate pole of femininity. You're always in between. So that's why every man will have naturally, uh, as his authentic self, he will have feminine traits. So there are four different stages of the anima integration or anima development, which refers to uh, so uh, stages of um, integrating the feminine aspects of a man into his consciousness 
and accepting their existence. So the feminine aspects are usually connected to compassion, empathy, creativity, imagination, and also spirituality. Um, and it is also, the feminine is also re referred to as the internal world, the mystical, the unknown world. Okay, so the first stage is the Eve stage, referring to Eve from uh, the Garden of Eden, so Adam and Eve, uh, from the story of Genesis in the Bible. Now this is the lowest level of anima integration. It is a very underdeveloped anima, where the man is disconnected to his feelings and emotions. Hence he, he is sort of possessed by his anima. Um, he will not understand what he wants in life because he is sort of um, not in tune with, with himself, with his emotions and feelings. Uh, therefore he cannot really have any clear goals or objectives because the anima is also the mediator to his unconsciousness, he will not understand himself properly because he, that, that bridge to his deeper sense is not present. So he is sort of foreign or alien to himself. And he very importantly, he sees women as simply a means to sexual intercourse. He does not see them as authentic individuals. And he also sees them as manipulative and in charge because they control the outcomes of his sexual desires. They sort of pull the strings, they, are, they call the shots according to a man in the Eve stage. And he also sees women as immoral. Now, in this case, a man would be possessed by his anima because, uh, and he feels powerless and not in control. Uh, and he can, that can manifest itself as being very, relatively moody, overly emotional. Yeah. So the second stage is the Helen stage, referring to um, Helen of Troy. Now, in this stage, women are deemed as being uh, capable of success and are able, but they are still seen as not really virtuous in general and still controlling the man. Therefore, he feels like he is not in control over his own life. And a man in the Helen stage also has a lack of creativity and imagination because the anima is referring to these feminine, actually, typically, let's say, relatively feminine traits of creativity because it is like introspective and imagination. Um, hence, um, this man might have some direction, but still lacks creativity. So in the third stage, uh, we have the Mary stage, referring to the Virgin Mary, where the man can actually deem women as being virtuous and capable of doing good. But the idea of virtue is quite dogmatic and rigid. So the man has a rigid idea of femininity that does not allow for that, say, let's say the variations and the complexity that occurs in reality. He's not fond of his own emotionality and uh, ways that are um, and ways that are not coinciding with his dogma. So he doesn't like that. And this relationship to his unconscious is still quite basic and underdeveloped because he, he, the unconscious is dynamic, peculiar, contradictory, which is not aligned with his dogmatic sense-making. The fourth and la final stage is the F Sophia stage, which is referring to uh, the words or the Der derivation of uh, the Greek word for wisdom, uh, which is Sophia, and the man has integrated his feminine side properly. He is able to view women as authentic individuals who are capable of both good and bad. He has access to his unconscious mind because the bridge, the anima, that mediator is present, and he has integrated it relatively well into his consciousness. And he has access to wisdom now, hence Sophia. Um, and one thing that the, the video by the Diamond Net uh, said very nicely, uh, the man is then able to apply his logos to the feminine eros. So the logos is um, sort of the energy of the, of the man, or of, let's say masculine energy, which is referring to the intellect, uh, the rational, the logical, and the uh, feminine energy is the eros, referring to compassion, um, care, empathy, and here now a man is able to relate to the, the to Eros and be able to apply his rationality to the feminine side, hence they're sort of integrated into once and are more whole then. And um, yeah, uh, and the Diamond Net also said that according to Jung, uh, to Carl Jung who set up this theory of the anima, that men are ruled by the Logos, which is the rational, logical, and intellectual, and women are ruled by Eros, which is the loving, caring, compassionate, and unifying. And that was, that's, that's a quote from uh, the Diamond Net video on the anima and animus. And how do you um, get then from the stage of um, Eve to 
ultimately the stage of Sophia? Well, the key really I would say is that you need to um, acknowledge your emotional, as a man, you need to acknowledge your emotional side, your feelings, your feelings for compassion, and let, let's say the typically feminine aspect, and integrate them into who you are and actually own them, you know, really uh, value them for their, for their utility and be proud of them, let's say. Don't repress them. That's, I would say, roughly speaking, how you would uh, move into the uh, Sophia stage. And what one thing, one criticism I have of this four stages is that it's quite sort of vague, like um, between the stages, they, they seem to be very sort of intertwined. And to me, one could just say really the Eros, uh, sorry, the anima is relatively un, uh, underdeveloped and or it is well integrated. Um, so the stages between them, um, I myself will still need to look into them more to really dive deep and really comprehend them more, but at the moment, I, I feel like they're quite vague still. And one thing important to say is that the anima can never be fully integrated. It is so big because it is a man's entire sense-making of reality. There is just so much to it, and our consciousness in comparison is very small and only capable of incorporating uh, a, a limited amount and has a, quite a limited capacity, whereas the anima is so, so... Um, colossal that it, it's not possible but you can always be in the process of integrating it more and more and that is I guess that is the key of what Carl Jung was trying to promote and emphasize that that is what should be undertaken the continuous integration of the anima yes so in conclusion the anima is let's say the feminine side of a man but also his ability to relate to his external and internal environment his ability to um, access his unconscious mind, the bridge to his unconscious mind. Um, and there are different stages of the anima integration or anima development. Um, on the one hand, it being very underdeveloped where the man is very disconnected to his feelings and emotions and feels like um, women outside are in control of himself and he's therefore possessed by the anima. And then on the other side, in the Sophia stage, uh, the anima is well integrated, um, the man is able to apply his, himself to the feminine and uh, fully, mm, fully incorporated in his personality, which is the key to wisdom, according to Carl Jung. And the way to get there is by accepting your, as a man, your emotions and feelings and feminine aspects and actually valuing them and developing them actively. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to learn more about self-development, dating, and how to reduce suffering in life. Thank you for listening.